there is so much noise being made in the Kenyan environment that they must know that people are angry. They and must be they, hearing something. If yeah. they ever doubted it, the dramatization of this anger by the young people in the month of July must and should have sent a chilling message. Mm. And for the first time, you could see even the head of state did not leave the country. Mm. Mm. The head of state sent the finance bill. The parliamentarians were scared. The cabinet ministers were no longer flying their flags. Yeah. They, they got it. But somehow, memories are shot and selective. That is why we must keep on reminding them. But as I said a little earlier, when a country is hurtling towards its destruction, even when God reasons with the leaders, they think God mad. Mm. I fear that we may be in such a state. We have fear there are politicians in this country who think they are larger than life, almost as large as death. <laughs> and that is part of our problem. They are insensitive. Even when the truth sits on their laps, it telling is. them, behold, I am the truth, mm. they refuse to listen. And if they do, Listen, they refuse to hearken. Yes. Look, for example, at the finance bill. Mm -hmm. Without precedent, there has never been in the history of any country that I know where the president, upon a re receiving a bill, returns it with all provisions deleted without recommendation as to what ought to happen. We are now back again. The finance bill will be back with the bank. Mm -hmm. Cabinet reconstituted. And the individuals whom we thought would leave cabinet are back there. Mm. And in fact, when they are being vetted, they tell us how much they have raised or made in the last two years. Personal fortunes have increased, but the fortunes of the country have dwindled. Mm. These are concerns, and yet we are not angry as Kenyans. So that what the Gen Z did was to scare the political class for only a short while and after they have entered into this alliance with the president has entered into this alliance with mr raila odinga he now feels that he has settled the political temperature because by doing so he has ethnicized the politics of the country and in his mind i think neutered the movement of the young people hmm. so you can do whatever you want and this is not without precedent we have seen it we have seen it with the president moy we have seen it with the president kibaki after 2008 we have seen it with president uhuru kenyatta and now with president Ruto. if you remember during the campaign the president say i will not allow myself to enter into any engagement Kenyans would sustain the protest. Mm. The middle class would sustain the protest in an organized manner. And we saw this in Sudan. When the middle class, the doctors, the lawyers, the business people, the engineers came to the street until Omar el-Bashir left office. Mm. We saw this in Bangladesh until Sheikh Hasina ran away and the entire cabinet ran away we are not saying that they ran or run away or leave office we are simply saying until they respond pos positively and do the things that are in the interest of the nation but kenyans very quickly become ethnic mm. i saw for example when a few individuals were appointed into cabinet from nyanza when you <laughs> are in some of these forums, which are ethnic, mm. a number of the, the individuals from the local community are now saying, we now control <laughs> the treasury. The money is now kept in Homer Bay. <laughs> we are happy now. And, and you cannot run a nation on the basis of giving pride of place to primordial ethnic instincts. You soon divide the people. Mm -hmm. You hold homecoming parties and celebrate, and he who was the devil becomes the angel. 
and the anger is only as far as your political kingpin has not had his need satisfied hmm. once your political kingpin has been taken care of then we all say hallelujah it is well with us hmm. that uh, in this country the truth depends it depends on which tribal affiliation you are talking about and that is relevant and that is a tragic thing if you look at uh, even the whole fight against corruption if you arrest anybody they say he is a thief we know but he's our very own <laughs> and our therefore <laughs> he's our thief and therefore mm. he or she ought not to be punished mm. and it's because the foundation is wrong i i, I always remember molimu nyerere saying this very eloquently say that when a nation is bankrupt of ideas then they sacrifice at the altar of ethnicity or religion in kenya it is ethnicity and the question you are posing how do we deal with it mm -hmm. history has demonstrated that if you have leadership at the top that walks the talk it can be eliminated mm -hmm. I worked fairly closely with President John Joseph Pombe Magufuli and within one year he had re injected discipline in governance he had ensured that things were happening on the right way in the right way and it can be done when the tone from the top is clear consistent and is accompanied by action but when the tone from the top is not clear or one says with one side of the mouth what is right and does completely the wrong thing then the people know that this is just but a joke mm -hmm. now occasionally when i see individuals who are delivering speeches on the national scene and 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 i don't i don't <clears throat> even listen keenly to those i wait for them at funerals in their rural settings <laughs> when they now descend into their factory setting <laughs> and listen to what they say i listened to one of them who was speaking in nyanza and is from the kalenji in extraction and this is a senior government official say we are nilots and this is our time to organize against other communities you are senior <laughs> government official you are talking about your nilotness hmm. You are not talking about the Republic of Kenya. How can it be repaired? We must, as a country, take a solemn vow. Look even at the professions. If you go to lawyers, we are now organizing ourselves around ethnicity. Kisis of their own association, Luos of their own, Kikuyus of their own, Kambas of their own. What is the role of the Law Society of Kenya? Why do we descend into these <laughs> ethnic outfits? But we do. And we don't apologize. Mm. And as long as we follow that path, the country will ultimately pay. And it can pay very dearly. If you doubt me, ask the Somalis. How, what the equivalent of tribe in Somalia is the clan. Mm. And that is why it has not been possible to put Somalia together. Because we worship at the altar of the gods of ethnicity hmm. the president hmm. if he chose to hmm. can move us in the right direction even by the manner in which you appoint individuals if you look at major organizations and look at the appointments in this country at the national level and you look at the appointments in the counties of a young mentee who is a doctor of the law extraction was head of the medical sector in Siaya. He was told by the then administration in Siaya, we cannot have a man from Migori. Can you, he's, he's <laughs> of the Lua extraction now. <laughs> the division is because he's from Migori, not Siaya. Siaya. A doctor. But yet, when you and me want to are sick and we want to be treated we don't mm. care about the tribe we just want a good doctor when mm. we are flying we are not asking which tribe uh, who's the which tribe is the pilot we just want a good pilot i think it is uh, uh deng xiaoping once said that when you want the rat caught you simply want a cut than that can cut the rat you don't care whether it's black or brown mm. but here we ask 
is the cut our cut. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go to the health sector, one of the questions is why are we migrating into the new system? Why must we always be changing things? How does a country build a system? Yeah. If you go to the Scandinavian countries which we can learn from in the health sector, you have a sector that is improved every other time. If there was a problem with the NHIF, explain to us how it is being implemented. This opaque approach of doing things which ends up into a scandal is something that does annoy. And once again, mm. people should just say, we are not going to pay into that system. And people can create alternative systems. There have been countries where there are tax boycotts. And if that is done, I remember at one time, the Langata Karen Association went to court and said, we are not going to pay our rates mm -hmm. to the Nairobi City Council at that time. And they were granted orders and they used that money to improve their environment. Yeah. I think that that should happen. If you go into the area of taxation, look at the usurious tax. Kenya is one of the countries where banks make tons mm. of millions of money. If you are a business person, who betide you if you go into the bank and take a loan? So there are things that people can do. Yep. I know there are quite a number of organizations which talk about these things. I know they are public-spirited individuals who do these things, but we are too much spectators. We expect some people to be the warriors in the arena while we watch and spectate. We must be engaged. Mm. That is what happens. Civic engagement and is something that we have seen consistently in different countries and it can make governments change their stances. A bit about the bush. If we are not careful, and be wary of the fury of a patient population. Mm. Mm. When you least expect it, something can ignite the population in a manner that was never expected. I'm one who believes that we should exhaust all systems, all methods of having peaceful change. But if peaceful change is impossible, let me tell you, mm. Revolution is the language of the unheard mm -hmm. and it can happen. Let us not <clears throat> cheat ourselves that this country is immune. I was intimately involved in the attempt at making peace in the year 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And but for the intervention of the international community, this country was descending into civil war. Mm -hmm. And once again, and I, I traveled this country, I traveled in the informal settlements in this city, the anger is palpable. You take a taxi, you take a boda boda, and they want to have a conversation. Everybody with wants you. to talk about it. And they are telling you, We are angry, what can we do? Yeah. And somehow, if you look at our parliament, which is neutered, it speaks not about any of these things. They are going to spend millions of shillings now in the process of impeachment of the deputy president mm. going around the country to ask us whether the deputy president is guilty or not guilty. Who among them is without sin? Mm. The sins that they are accusing the deputy president of, each one of them almost without exception. I would have wanted my parliament to discuss the economic situation. I would have wanted to hear my parliamentarians talking about the lack of salaries or proper remuneration for different cadres of the society. I do not hear that. Mm. Instead, they are defending, uh, they are fighting about uh, uh, the constituency development fund, which I don't think they should manage. Mm. Mm. That is not their duty. And when you walk around Nairobi or any part of the country, you see the poster of a member of parliament, yeah. Yeah. constructed courtesy of this parliament. That is our tax money should not bear the image of an individual. It is sad, my sister. Mm. It is sad, Eric, that we are in this space. But I can guarantee you, if it is not in our lifetime, if this continues, this country is going to pay. And that could be the revolution mm. that will change things. That if we are not careful, it could become worse before it becomes better. And I said in my last letter, the first letter in 2023 to Mr. Odinga and the president, then I told, I told them, let us paddle this water while it is knee deep. Mm. Because when it gets to our necks, we will sink 
all of us. Yeah. The speech by PLO Lumumba paints a vivid and urgent picture of the socio-political state in Kenya, highlighting the disillusionment, frustration, and structural issues that have plagued the nation. The recurring themes in his address, ethnic divisions, political elitism, poor governance, and the erosion of public trust reflect the deep-rooted challenges Kenya faces in its quest for sustainable peace and progress. Lumumba's message is not just a critique, but a call to action, urging both the leadership and citizens to take responsibility for the country's future. Lumumba emphasizes that the political class has become detached from the needs of ordinary Kenyans, engaging instead in alliances and ethnic maneuvering that benefit only a select few. He warns against the dangers of ethnic politics, which continue to divide the nation rather than foster unity. The idea that ethnicity becomes a weapon for personal gain, whether in political appointments or resource allocation, poses a serious threat to national cohesion. Drawing parallels with countries like Somalia, he warns that the obsession with ethnic identity could lead Kenya down a dangerous path of fragmentation. Economic mismanagement is also central to Lumumba's critique, with a focus on the finance bill, taxation policies, and widening inequalities. He notes that while the political elite amass personal wealth, the ordinary Kenyan struggles to make ends meet. These inequities are compounded by public policies that are poorly implemented, further alienating the population. The warning that revolution is the language of the unheard echoes throughout the speech, urging leaders to take proactive measures before public frustration boils over. The solution, as Lumumba sees it, lies in leadership that is not just symbolic, but genuinely transformational. Drawing on examples from Tanzania's late president, John Magafuli, he argues that effective governance requires clear, consistent action from the top. Lumumba urges Kenyans to move beyond passive observation and embrace civic engagement, emphasizing that change must come not only from the government, but also from a vigilant and active citizenry. He calls on the public to demand accountability, even suggesting the use of peaceful protests, boycotts, and alternative systems to push back against poor governance. Ultimately, Lumumba's message is both a caution and an appeal. If the current trajectory continues unchecked, Kenya risks deeper instability and economic collapse. However, with visionary leadership and engaged citizens, the country can still avert disaster. His closing call is a sobering reminder. Leaders and citizens must act now while the challenges are still manageable or face the peril of a revolution driven by anger and despair. The time for reflection, decisive action, and unity is now, before the waters rise too high for any of us to stay afloat. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Your support helps us grow and create even better content. See you in the next one.